What fighter jet truly fits Canada's unique needs in 2025 and beyond? Is it the sleek high-tech American F-35 or the cost-effective cold-weather-ready Saab Gripen? This isn't just a comparison of specs, it's a question of values and a second chance at our aerospace legacy. Because we're not just buying jets, we're choosing what kind of country we want to be. Canada's unique defense landscape. When choosing our next fighter jet, we have to think beyond just dogfights and tech specs. Canada's aircraft need to cover a lot of ground, literally and strategically. They must patrol and protect our vast Arctic region where climate change and global tensions are making the North more contested than ever. They also need to meet our NORAD obligations, ready to intercept any aircraft entering North American airspace, often in a moment's notice. Beyond our borders, they've got to be deployment ready for NATO missions and international operations, standing shoulder to shoulder with our allies. And here at home, these jets have to support emergency response too capable of landing on icy, short, and remote runways from coast to coast to coast. This isn't just about power. It's about versatility, readiness, and defending our unique geography. The F-35. The Lockheed Martin F-35A Lightning II is no doubt an impressive machine. It's a fifth-generation stealth powerhouse. With its radar-absorbent airframe and materials, it's built to disappear from enemy screens. Inside, it features cutting-edge sensor fusion, making it a flying data hub that links pilots, command centers, and allied forces in real time. It can reach speeds of over Mach 1.2, and it's paired with a smart helmet system so advanced it costs more than $400,000 per helmet. But all that technology comes with an equally advanced price tag. Each jet costs between 100 and 150 million Canadian dollars to purchase. Operating it, over 33,000 US dollars per flight hour. And the lifetime cost of an F-35? Over 250 million Canadian dollars. That's a quarter billion dollars. But here's the real kicker, control. Canada won't have access to the f 35 source code. That means we can't upgrade it, patch it, or even repair key systems without American approval. All maintenance and spare parts are routed through U.S. suppliers. If they say stop, we stop. And remember, President Trump didn't just suggest cutting off parts to allies. He boasted about it. He even floated the idea of selling detuned versions of the F-35 to countries that don't fall in line with U.S. foreign policy. For a country like Canada, a G7 democracy that values its independent voice, that's not just expensive, that's a strategic vulnerability. The Gripen. Don't let the lower price fool you. Saab's JAS-39 Gripen E is no slouch. This 4.5 generation multi-role fighter is fast, nimble, and packed with modern technology. It's capable of super cruise, flying it over Mach 1.2 without afterburner, a big deal for fuel efficiency and range. It comes equipped with a modern ESA radar system and infrared search and track, which means it can even detect stealth aircraft without giving away its position. For long range engagements, it carries meteor missiles with an engagement envelope over over 100 kilometers. It also boasts a full electronic warfare suite giving it advanced jamming, countermeasure, and self-defense capabilities. And when it comes to cost, a brand new Gripen comes in at about 85 million Canadian dollars per unit, well below the F-35. Each hour of flight costs around 7,000 US dollars, compared to over $33,000 for the F-35. And over the lifetime of the jet, the Gripen costs nearly half of what we'd pay for an F-35. But here's the real win. Control. Saab has offered full technology transfer to Canada. That means local assembly, local maintenance, and Canadian control over software, upgrades, and logistics. No permission slips from Washington, no political strings, just Canadian sovereignty. And it gets better. That local production means jobs, training, and R&D opportunities for Canadian engineers and technicians. This isn't just about buying jets. It's about rebuilding a made-in-Canada aerospace sector. It's about self-reliance. And in an increasingly uncertain world, that might be the most strategic choice we can make. Strategic fit. While we've discussed Canada's defense needs, we haven't examined which aircraft better aligns with Canada's need for interoperability with NORAD and NATO and operational readiness in the Arctic and remote regions. Let's start with the F-35. Yes, it's interoperable with NATO forces. That's a win. But it struggles in Canada's northern conditions. 
It needs long, paved runways and even heated hangars to function reliably. Now let's talk about the Gripen. It can take off from icy roadways less than 800 meters long, built for Nordic winters and perfect for Canada's north. It allows for rapid deployment, quick turnarounds, and field maintenance with minimal support. And it's already battle-tested in joint operations with several allied nations. So who fits better? For NATO war games and stealth missions abroad, the F-35 is a strong contender. But for Canadian sovereignty, remote ops, and cost control, the Gripen isn't just a fighter. It's purpose-built for a country like ours. And when national defense is on the line, fit matters. The numbers don't lie. Let's say Canada follows through with its plan to buy 88 new fighter jets. What will the actual cost be? The F-35 comes with a steep price tag, around 10 billion Canadian dollars just to acquire the fleet, then add 15 to 20 billion more in long-term support and life cycle costs. That's a total approaching $30 billion. The Gripen starts at a lower cost, about 7.5 billion Canadian dollars to purchase, add 10 to 12 billion for local production, maintenance, and support, that brings the total closer to $18 billion. That's a $12 billion difference. Real money with real potential. So what could Canada do with $12 billion saved? We could invest in cyber defense, build Arctic infrastructure and forward bases, strengthen our aerospace sector through Canadian innovation, and expand support for our veterans in domestic defense. In short, it's not just about what we buy. It's about what we build with the rest. Let's not forget our past. Canada once dreamed big with the Avro Aero, a cutting-edge, supersonic jet fighter we built ourselves in the 1950s. It was fast, it was innovative, and it was ours. But that dream was scrapped. Officially, the reason was cost. Unofficially, it was built to fight the previous war, defending against bombers coming over the North Pole. Also, many believe political pressure from the U.S. played a role in killing the project. Now, in 2025, we stand at a crossroads again. Do we outsource our defense, hand over control to foreign governments, and repeat history? Or do we choose to revive our national pride and name our next aircraft, the Aero 2? Made in Canada, made for Canada. Conclusion Both jets offer strengths. But in my humble opinion, only one offers sovereignty, jobs, savings, and true fit for Canadian terrain and policy. What do you think? Is it time to stop buying the American dream and start building the Canadian one? Tell us in the comments. Should the next Canadian fighter be the F-35, the Gripen, or something we build ourselves?